think. Yep. Okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> we are live. I think we're, yeah, okay. Yes, we are. So, welcome. My name is Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are going live to teach you. All right, I have to take these off because I can see close up, but not far away. So, okay. So, we are going live to teach you how to paint these cute little puppy dogs with this lovely little pickup truck here. All right, so uh, I'm going to start with the very beginning details that we have. So we, first of all, let me just say that we try to make it super easy for beginners. That's my specialty is teaching beginners how to paint. So we have these awesome kits that come with everything that you need, including the line art. So you have this, and then we have the transfer paper so that you can actually transfer this over to a canvas. So you do not need to know how to draw. So that's very important. Um, so let me talk about the first steps here. All right, so you'll have this and you'll have the transfer paper and some helpful hints here will be uh, to have your transfer paper with the dull gray side up and then the shiny black side down. So that's very helpful. And then also I only tape up here at the top uh, because that way as you do your tracing and you use a, where's my pencil? Um, you use your pencil to go ahead and go over every single line, but there's a lot of detail here. So what you'll want to do is make sure that you can check it as you go and make sure you get every single line. So it will create this look like a graphite line on your canvas. But again, this all needs to be very flexible to go ahead and lift up and see it. And then also secure up here so that you can always just put it right back down in the exact same spot. Uh, so that will get you through the tracing part. And again, you just want to make sure and go over every single line that you see. And then it will, it's like magic. It's so wonderful. You can actually just see it on your canvas there whenever you're done. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and lift this off. And your canvas will definitely look a little bit different than mine. I use canvas boards for economy since I paint so much but your canvas will have some depth to it and a wooden frame, so it's much nicer than this one. All right, so here is our canvas here, and one other step that I've done, your kit also comes with a permanent marker. So every single place that you see a line, you wanna go ahead, and especially with this painting, with the way the style is and all of the shapes, you wanna definitely take this permanent marker and do a hard line over the top. So what that does is it helps give you a nice refined border, uh, makes the process much easier for beginners. It also bleeds through paint so you don't lose any of your shapes as you go. So very helpful, so that's also with your kit there. And then what we're gonna do now is, this is all ready to go, absolutely ready to paint into. So I'm gonna go ahead and position this flat on a flat surface. I'm gonna change the angle of the camera. And I do recommend that with these smaller sizes, this is an 11 by 14. So anything 11 by 14 and smaller uh, can certainly be placed on a flat uh, surface. It helps you uh, not have to worry about water runs. So that is awesome. So uh, we struggle with that a lot. I have a lot of uh, beginners that struggle a lot with water runs when it's in a vertical position on the easel. And so this is very helpful just to go ahead and place it flat. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and place this flat here. Move my keyboard up. We're gonna move the camera down. So here we go. That looks really good. Moving my computer to where I can see it really well. All right, so I've got some brushes nearby. The brushes that I uh, have with the kit are going to be, I have a mama brush, which is a half inch flat tacklon brush, and then little buddy, and then little bit. So these are all Taclon brushes. I love those. And then we've got our bucket of water nearby. That's the only thing that doesn't come in the kit, just the water and whatever you put it in. Other than that, everything is with the kit. And then I have a lot of paint. There is a lovely 
full kit that comes, yours will look prettier than mine. <laughs> mine is, I've been painting a lot today. Um, and then let's see, you'll have some paint plates and also an apron. So I'm gonna start with kind of what I have. Again, I've been painting a lot. So I've got some titanium white that I will already have to work into and then also some Mars black. And let me get my model up here on my computer to where I can see it. Let me see what I've done. I know y'all can't see this. That is another thing I need to work on is uh, I record through Zoom and I do know how to share a visual. That's not really an issue. The problem is, is that it takes up a giant amount of the space on the screen and I need for y'all to really see this. So always working on those little things, but what I might do is just put a picture nearby or something. But so I'm always learning, always trying to improve. All right, so let's see. We are going to do, hmm, I'm gonna save, I, I know in the model I have a black background, so I'm gonna save that to the very end. And we're going to have a turquoise truck. All right, so let me go ahead and grab a clean plate. And we will start by using some Viridian. All right, nice big quarter size dollop of that. And then let's go ahead and use some primary cyan blue. Same size dollop there. I'm going to go ahead and use a mama brush and grab a nice big dollop of the white. All right, we're gonna start by just doing a little pinch off of that blue and a little pinch off of that viridian. Mix that in with one of those dollops of white. And there it is. So the concentration is definitely a lot more of the white. About two times more white compared to that. So that's, and you can certainly lighten it up a lot more. You can add more viridian to take it to more of like a teal color. All right, so there's a nice mix. And I don't use Mama that much because it's so tiny in here. So you can try to save yourself a little bit of time, but it won't help much, will it? <laughs> Let's go ahead and switch over to Buddy. Everything's so small. All right, so here is little Buddy, and I'm gonna go ahead and just curve around. This is such an easy painting. Well, way to go. Oh no. Okay. I call this almost like coloring book painting. I mean, it is so simple. So if that is what you are wanting, you came to the right place. Very therapeutic, very relaxing. All right, when you want really good coverage into these small areas, you wanna to try to hold that brush over to the side, parallel to the canvas. See, my honey bear is texting me and he is like, he is saying something about golden chick. This is an emergency. <laughs> hold on. I have to respond to this question about golden chick. Hold on. Wouldn't you agree that this is an emergency? Uh, said, I am actually waiting in line at the Golden Chick to get dinner tonight because I love you so very much. Amen. Hold on, I have to respond. This is an emergency, sorry. <laughs> uh, yay. <laughs> um, so excited for Golden tonight. I love you so very much. Exclamation points. Return. All right, thank you for that. <laughs> All right, and also I want to say hello to everybody out there. Whoever is joining me live this wonderful evening. We are expecting thunderstorms. In fact, I might want to hurry. I don't know. I hope I don't get kicked off the computer. That would stink. 
sometimes I don't have much control over that. And if y'all have any questions about any of this, like process, where to get it, ordering links, always be sure to ask that in the comments. Love helping out. Always go back and check that after the class. See, there's my little light. All right. I'm going to put that off into the water. I'm going to switch over to a little bit because everything is just so tiny. Lots of little details here. So this is my little bit brush. It's just a little round tack on brush. Just hold it like a pencil. Paint into those spots. If you do find that you need to feather out your brush strokes a little bit, then of course just turn those over to the side. And you want to make sure you get all these little tiny areas. It can be a little bit tricky. And a little bit of overpaint over some of the black is fine because we can go back and retouch that later. Either with paint or even with your permanent marker too. If you do wait and use the permanent marker, my best piece of advice there is just to make sure absolutely that the paint is all completely 100% dry or else wet paint will kill your Sharpie instantly. And that makes it very sad. I think I have all of the truck in place. Alright, now let's go ahead and do some hearts. Alright, so we'll be using some cadmium red. And I want to cool this off a little bit, so I will be adding some primary magenta. So we'll just mix those equally, and that gives me a cool red. Oh, that scared me. Oh my gosh, that was my dog sneezing. I don't know why that scared me, but it did. Normally it doesn't. It made me jump. <laughs> All right, heart number one. You can see how there's a lot of kind of, I call them unpleasant line, you know, lines in the paint, but let's feather those out. So I'm going to go ahead and take a nice amount of paint on one flat side of the brush and then just very gently feather that out by holding the brush over to the side. You can also take a larger brush too, like your little buddy brush and just kind of very lightly go over the top that way too. That's another way to do it. And then the next heart. Then 
feather that out. Get a nice layer of paint on one flat side and just very lightly place that in over the top. Alright, beautiful. Oh, we have one more heart down here. So again, equal mix, primer magenta, cadmium red, and let's go ahead and do this one. those brush strokes all right beautiful okay so now let's do some violet uh, here we go violet a little pea size amount of that and a little bit of white. I like to brighten it up a little bit. Still using my little bit brush. And then we're gonna go into this awesome little flower here. I kind of do a little bit of a push out into the widest part of the petal, and then I just kind of pull that in with a light hand towards the center. So a little bit of push and pressure and then pull that in to the center. That is so lovely. Okay, now. Let's do a lighter, brighter color. All right, let's go ahead and grab some primary yellow. Let's do a little touch of some cadmium yellow with that. Equal mix between those two. And I'm going to go ahead and push that into that rose. Notice a little bit of red got in there, and that is okay. Grab some white. Let's better this out. Same thing on the other side. Got a little bit of symmetry happening here. A lot of thick paint over the top, really nice texture happening there. And then let's grab some more white and then a little touch of that cadmium red. Let's mix all that together. Get more of a pink color here. Push that into this one. Feather out right over the top. All right, let's let those set for just a little bit. There's a lot of texture in there. And then I'm gonna take this same golden color and the white. And let's go ahead and go into our angel wings. Let's add a lot more white. We're gonna lighten this up a little bit. You can also do a light gray for your angel wings and that would just be a big dollop of the white and a super tiny touch of the black, of Mars black.
and a lot more just pure white into the top now. Take these into just light curved strokes. Follow the same angle. Lovely, and now we need the color of our little Labradors. And I'm going to make sure they're very golden as well. Use that same color. Just make them really bright. And you can certainly change the color of your puppy dogs if you want. Depending on what color your puppy dogs are. I will say if your dogs are brown, you can mix brown with mix of orange and black. Gray dogs would just be the white and the Mars black. Feather that out inside that shape. Some nice good coverage over there. Alright, now let's mix up some beautiful green. So I want some bright yellow green. And I'm going to mix a tad of that viridian with my bright yellow green using my little bit brush again I feel like I use a little bit for almost this entire painting And the shape of these little tiny leaves, it kind of feels like you make a parentheses and another parentheses and just fill in. Again, try to hold that brush more over to the side to get really good coverage over the surface. Just mainly concentrating on getting that color into the shape. We still have some refining to do for details, but again, this is just that first touch. Very nice. Okay, so now we have some gray that we need to work in. So I'm going to go back to this other plate here, grab some white and a little tiny amount of black. And we have this gray to work in our little bumper here. Take it all the way around. And we have the gray right in through here, too. And through here. And here. Now I'm going to add a little bit more white to that, but I'm going to still keep that little bit of residual gray on my brush, because a little bit of that won't hurt, but I'm going to do white right in through here for the lights. And right through here, just spin it round and round and round. And then for this particular painting today, I'm going to go ahead and just leave mine white. I will give some instruction on going ahead and proceeding with black if you'd like. But since I'm going to leave mine white in the background, I'm going to go ahead and do my tires black. If you are doing the black background, you'll need to do your tires a gray color so that they don't get lost in the black background. Now 
I'm going to go back and revisit my roses, work in some texture. And then we'll finish up with some outline and details. All right, let's go to those roses. Let's continue using a little bit brush, grab some white paint, and just very lightly kind of push in just little half circles of white, very gently over the top. Again, little half circles. my texture over the top of that rose. Now let's be a little bit more delicate with this next one. Tiny little lines. Little half circles. Work that in a little circular pattern until you get to the middle. Alright, now I need a little bit of shadow in here so I'm going to go ahead and pick up some of that cadmium red and just a little comma right in the center for shadow and then I'm going to add in just a few more half circles here kind of wiggle it a little bit with your hand again a little comma right in the center lift off of the light hand and then just kind of wiggle out those little half circles and there's our fun little roses and then we need a center for our flower here, so I'm going to use the biggest brush, dip down into black, there it is, a circular pattern, press firmly right in the center, there is the center of our flower, it's a fun little trick. Now we can work on some of our black outlines. Now, for beginners, you can make this incredibly easy on yourself by just, again, letting all this set up and dry and just come back in with your permanent marker and outline everything. Again, just make sure that that paint is absolutely dry, though, or it will kill your permanent marker. Just dries it right up instantly. And to help make your paint a bit more fluid, you can always add a little bit of water to it as well. And then to get a nice fine point, you want to do a little twist into the paint, and that will rotate the head of the brush into a nice fine point. So we're just touching this up, reinforcing our black lines you always want to save this black work to the very end because you can just imagine how it would get very muddy and disruptive with all of your bright colors so save this black work to the very end
And make sure your arm doesn't rest into the wet paint. Sometimes I get a little too relaxed. You have to be careful of that. Caca, my Hattie Bear's home. I'm just finishing up teaching the puppy dog painting. I'm almost done, actually. I talked about your golden chick announcement. See how we're doing. It's looking good. Just have a few more white highlights and then we'll be done. So still using my little bit brush and we're just going to do a few little light sketches. Doesn't take much, just a little bit there. All right, and then you have the option to repaint over this if you want, or you can leave it just as it is with your permanent marker. And then we can go ahead and just sign our masterpiece. Now, if you do black in the background, one other helpful hint too is I would just let everything completely set up and dry. Go ahead and paint all of this with your black in the background and then take your line art one more time. Just cut out that one section and tape it right above here and do your transfer on top of the black paint and you will see that impression. It'll be very faint and subtle, but you will be able to see it. And you can just place that right above your track and then that way you can just wait and do that at the very end. So. There it is. There's our beautiful uh, little love track with love puppies. 
So this has been very fun and again, very simple, easy painting. But thank you so much for joining me today. And if you have any questions, be sure and leave those in the comments. And the painting kit can be found on our website, tipsyartist.com. But we're so thankful for y'all and y'all have a glorious Friday evening and I'm going to go eat some golden chick fried chicken. I'm very excited. All right, toodles.